us recording. Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is our first session of the spring 2021 featured speaker series. Um, in these sessions, we're hearing from previous uh, textbook transformation and affordable materials grants um, to hear about how their projects went and any challenges they came across, how they met them. Um, it's a good opportunity for you guys to learn more about how our grants go um, and also think about how um, our grants might work for you. So. Uh, today, we are hearing from the Quantitative Reasoning Workbook team at Abraham Baldwin Agricultural College. Um, and I will go ahead and let you guys introduce yourselves and get started. Hello, I'm Dr. April Abbott. And I'm Sheila McClendon. And I am Amanda Urquhart. All right, so I'm going to start presenting first. So we uh, were grant 458 in round 14. So how all this started. So it was fall of 2018 and the Tifton campus had just gotten done with another another affordable learning grant um, for college algebra for the whole department and we were wrapping that up. And I was like in my head, I was a project lead on the other grant and in my head I was considering, well, should we do something for quantitative reasoning because that class was growing uh, as we um, in the USG split like we have determined we need a STEM path and we need a non STEM path. Um, and the previous materials we were using for uh, uh, 1001 was uh, a Pearson book, uh, Mathematics All Around by Piernot, and we were using their My Math Lab software. But even without a physical textbook, the price was running about $165 per student, and that was, I like, I felt kind of a lot, especially as more alternatives were becoming available. Uh, and another thing that was happening at the time was we were uh, consolidating with Bainbridge, we were finally being able to allow to talk to each other and um, and grow. And so when uh, this sales representative, Alice Pesk, Queen came up to me. He um he he's like I'd like to talk to you about Newton Alta. And I'm like okay, what is that? And he's like all right, it's um it's an open source um software material. We used all open sources. He tried to pitch it to me for algebra first. I'm like no, we're happy with WebAssign. You know we got it down below forty dollars for a class. And he's like well we also have it for quantitative reasoning. We have open source material for that, and we have a mastery learning type software that the kids can use. And all the questions have been implemented. The only thing you have to do is just basically um, make a calendar out of it. And the really the selling point for me for that was it was $40 for as long as the students in the class. So even if a student failed the class and they retake it, it would still be $40. And I'm like that was a driving point for me because all there were other sales representatives coming to me about quantitative reasoning, but their prices were far more expensive. And I know the $40 was a doable learning grant possibility. So um, I uh, decided I would like to try it again. So I decided to take on um, the process of writing the grant with our uh, grant um, developer Scott Pierce on campus. And honestly, I was just kind of a little cocky about it. Like I had already passed round 11, you know, and that I just kind of copy pasted that grant proposal, just changed the name and I kind of turned it into round 13 and I got rejected um, in the spring of 2019. Um, and for those of you who have never done a grant, they grade you on a rubric, all right? They grade you on your transformation, uh, on impact of student savings, how well you organized and planned and how feasible it is to do it, um, the qualitative and quantitative measures that you're going to do for the grant because you have to do um, some studying on whether your thing was impactful, and then clarity and alignment. So they love the savings. Savings was going to save our students $62,000 a year by going to this. Uh, and making a workbook is what we really wanted to focus on because that's the one thing Newton didn't have. They didn't have a book, so we were going to have to make a workbook. 
So um, we had good reviews on the savings, but they're like, look, you need more planning. You didn't tell us what each person was going to do. You just kind of stated you wanted some money. And, uh, and they're like, yeah, you mentioned the survey, but you didn't tell us what the survey was. You didn't tell us how you plan to finish this up. So it needed more planning. So I tried again. Um, I sh that's a typo right there. That should be summer of 2019. And I fixed everything. I explained in further detail. I went ahead and made the survey. I submitted a Caltrits link. I got with the library talking about how we were going to upload materials to Galileo. Um, everything they gave us in the critique, it didn't like discourage me. I'm like, all right, I'm going to take this. And I'm going to make it better for the next time around. And we got the grant. All right, so now I'm going to turn it over to Sheila to continue about how we made the workbook. OK, so this page, you know, we kind of all generally met together, had a group meeting and we separated, you know, we talk about separating our chapters. We decided on a kind of a format of chapters, an order of chapters we would go through and we separated the chapters. Each of us took a chapter, agreed on chapter we would work on and then we left the meeting and we were going to write our own chapters. We we're going to use that Newton Alta, which was new to all of us. So we all had to kind of take a look at it, but we agreed that we would develop this workbook. Each of us had written our own chapters and would use the open resource from Newton Alta. And so we all went to our little silos and kind of started working on it and we kind of collectively realized we've got to incorporate some of those Newton type problems into the workbook we're developing because they were the same stuff, but the way they being presented in Newton was slightly different. So along the line, we had to go back and incorporate some new stuff into our chapters. And then we brought it all back together and reviewed it. And we would send our stuff in and April would pull it all together and send it back out to us to kind of review or in a groups you know face to face meeting we would kind of look at it on the screen and uh, you know at the end uh review the final draft and agreed on it but um ooh, let me back up so that was the big picture now looking at it this is the table of contents we kind of agreed on we had looked at what the order of presentation we had been using and kind of basically kept that format. We kind of rearranged some chapter organization. But as you can see here, this is the table of contents we agreed on as a group for our workbook. Uh, then we knew we could line up and pick the Newton sections to go with it the, with these chapters. Um, and we had April Abbott was working with it. Uh, Gary Dix. Uh, Wanda Coston, Jan Gregus, uh, Amanda Upcart, and myself were working. We did have one additional Bainbridge faculty member that uh, started the project with us, but he left to take on a different job at another uh, school. And so April, glutton for punishment that she was, just took on his chapter. Uh, so here's our table of contents that we had agreed on. So we left that first initial meeting after we had agreed on our chapters and went to work on our individual chapters. And how many of us have not thought about at some point in time writing our own textbook, right? You know, that's been a dream for most of us, I think. And while this was on a much lesser scale, it was a start. So here we set out to work on our chapters. I had chapter seven. This was the chapter I wanted anyhow. So when this one got assigned to me or this somebody suggested I take this one, I said, great, that's the one I wanted. Uh, so I sat down, tried to work on my stuff. And I think in that general meeting, we had kind of agreed to have some vocabulary, some text with maybe some fill in the blank, uh, some examples with solutions worked out, and then have some maybe some workbook problems and some homework problems. That's kind of how we're going to set our workbook up. So I started looking at what I'd previously had. I had never seen Newton, so I logged into that, looked at their problems. 
And prior to the merger, I'm from Bainbridge, and prior to the Bainbridge State with ABAC merger, I had taught business math as one of the courses. So stats was right down my alley with that. And I've looked at some of the stuff there and started working on my, my stuff, uh, working on my chapter, the first section, and came up with some st uh, text and started writing in, typing in some problems. And of course, with statistics, you're going to have a lot of graphs, a lot of charts. And that got to be a problem trying to put in some uh, charts and all. But then I got to wondering, am I putting in enough? Am I putting, am I putting too much? What kind of topics, content do I need to put in? Finding the appropriate examples to put in, the charts to put in to match up with examples without just outright stealing something from somebody else. Uh, so that kind of got to be a problem. Uh, so not knowing the Tipton faculty real well, this was relative new into our merger process. We hadn't had a chance to meet most of the Tipton faculty and really develop a working relationship with them. Wanda Coston was the other Bainbridge faculty member on this project. And so I called Wanda up, went by her office. I said, how are you doing on your chapter? And she said, I'm struggling. She said, I don't know how many problems to put in. She said, we didn't talk about that. Uh, she said, what kind of problems to put in? And she and I started chit chatting about this. And uh, so we kind of, amongst ourselves, two of us worked it out, what we were going to put in. And I asked her, I said, have you looked at Newton? She said, yes. Yeah. She said, their stuff's a lot different from the way we teach it. And I think that's the process. Now, Wanda and I talked with each other when we were working on our chapters, and we kind of talked about what we were going to use and what we were going to put in and how many problems and so forth. And maybe on the Tiffin campus, I think they may have casually in the hallway or something talked with each other. But as a group, we didn't really, when we were working on individual chapters, we didn't really talk amongst ourselves too much to what to put in. But I think we generally came to the same consensus at the end because we saw what we had been teaching and what we had planned on putting in our workbook. Sometimes the problems didn't always match up with Newton's style of teaching. Uh, for example, Newton only shows uh, how to solve two points using the slope point form. And we're all used to doing it that way, as well as including the slope intercept form. So that was something that, that's just one example, but there was plenty of those that let us all three uh, think that we need to incorporate some of the Newton's examples and problems into our workbook. So we had several meetings and we came back and, um, let me back up. This is where we decided we needed to put more of the Newton problems into the workbook. So everybody went back and added more of those into our workbook and uh, then we reviewed the final draft. Well, not the final draft, but the one before we sent it to finishing. Uh, kind of show you what Newton looks like. And it takes some getting used to. Newton's a different project than the um, Pearson's My Math Lab, which is something I had been using. Uh, but it, once the students get used to it, they tend to enjoy it. Uh, it gives them a problem. It tells them the objective, uh, what section they're on, and they can ask for feedback. You know, this is the instructor page. We have an instructor sheet that we can tie have it pop up the answer. Uh, but if the student is struggling with this problem, they can click on more instruction. And as April mentioned, they, Newton doesn't have a workbook or a textbook. That was the reason for us developing the workbook. But they can click on more instruction and it takes them to sometimes a video, sometimes like a web page where it has information that relates to that content. And uh, then they can uh, come back to the problem. Sometimes it will work them through a problem and then send them back to their problem. And once they get the answer, they can click submit. And once they put in their answer and hit submit, this is what the Newton Alta page looks like. 
And of course, they can also get feedback and then continue on to the next problem. But that was kind of the process. We each individually worked on our chapters, planned on what we were wanting, and then when we met back as a group, we kind of tweaked it a little bit and went back and added the stuff, fixes that we needed to on our individual chapters, and then we agreed on the final pro uh, setup. And that in a was getting it all pulled together was the job that Amanda took on. So I'm going to let her take over now. So um, if you flip back to the table of contents page for me, April. There we go. Um, you'll see that my name is only on the review materials section. Um, when we had originally broken the sections up, I think I had um, signed up to do the set theory chapter. Um, but what we ended up seeing, as like Sheila mentioned, was that we all had kind of a different idea of what we wanted to put in the workbook and how we wanted to set it up. Um, we all had our own styles. April, if you can go to, to page 12. There we go. Um, some were incorporating more um, fill in the blanks. Others had more examples for students to work out. Um, some had more pre-worked examples. Um, it was just and, and different fonts and different alignments. And, and it was if we had just compiled it together as it was, it would have been um, like reading 12 different books um, or students using 12 different um, workbooks. So um, after talking with April um, and <laughs> My own little OCD and bit of a control freak mind sort of said, well, I will type it up. <laughs> so everybody fed their information to April um, and then it got filtered through her and then sent to me. And then um, I comp compiled it all into one Word document um, using some of the formatting tricks that Word sort of has already pre-programmed in, pre in it. Um, and it was nice and pretty and in color and it was beautiful. Um, it took several sort of trial and error um, run throughs with uh, some of the printing and um, just kind of trying with different fonts and, and, and stuff. It was quite time consuming um, because I was I was very nitpicky about anytime there's a variable, it's got to look like this and all the, the, font, the font sizes have to look like this whenever it's a example and then the the parts where we put in a solution for an example it had to look like this and it was all color coded um and beautiful the graphs were particularly time consuming um and put in there um and uh what we ran into and I, as far as the let me back up to the time consuming part um when it came time to actually compile it and put it all into one final document i think over one week's time, so about you know five days, about a work week, I think I pulled about four all-nighters um, and took sort of naps during the day in between while my kids were at school because it was before the semester started. Um, but we needed to you know have time to get them all printed and you know approved and printed and then to the bookstore. Um, and I'm just getting a little bit too old. Uh, did we lose audio? Amanda, you might have to lean forward. Or you got muted somehow, I don't know. Just, just run down to my office. I can't hear you at all. Is that better? Oh, yeah, it's, there you go. OK, it was my earbuds because I had sound going in through my earbuds and that's where it was pulling the mic microphone from. Sorry. OK, so what was the last thing everybody heard? <laughs> Time consuming. OK, um, so I think I pulled about four all nighters in one week um, leading up to the start of the semester um, because we had to um, have like the, the draft to look at. Um, and then we had to all get together and approve it and make changes and then it all had to get printed before it could go to the bookstore. Um, and it was a bit exhausting, but once it was finally in there, it was in there and we could go back and review it pretty easily. Um, 
the first few copies whenever we got together as a group and we had instructor copies they were all nice and and in color and it was just gorgeous um and then we got to look at looking at the printing cost and it's something that didn't even cross my mind whenever i was putting all the nice pretty color pictures in there um that it would have been far more expensive to try to print everything in color than black and white um so then i went back and and re reformatted and changed some of the colors so that it would look nice in black and white um and on the next page you can see this is an example of what was originally sent to me. So on the left side of your screen, you can see something that was originally sent to me and then how I took it and sort of transformed it and lined it up with the same formatting I was using on the rest of the pages. It had a nice pretty section header um, there. I put in, I made sure to put in extra space for definitions in case the student had, you know, larger handwriting or maybe one instructor used a little bit longer of a definition than another. Um, I made sure the lines all, um, you know, ended at the end of the page. Um, and I just kind of, I was real proud of it. It was like my little baby and I was right happy. <laughs> Um, and then when I mentioned the graphs um, and how time consuming those were on the next page, you can see some of them. I have a program on, that it's it's a free download uh, called Graph Calc, and I use that to pull up some of the graphs. Um, and uh, I could kind of use some of the little twerks in, in uh, Microsoft Word to add arrows and things that I couldn't get on the, the Graph Calc editor um, to incorporate those in there. And uh, it was. It was a task, but I feel like, you know, it, it had been, um, had it been each of us implementing our own section, it would have been a lot more chaotic for the students because yeah. there wouldn't have necessarily been any common, um, common threads throughout them all. And I just think it's a little bit visually more appealing um, to have it all look sort of very uniform. Um, and I didn't, it, you know, organizing stuff and making stuff look pretty, that just kind of, it's relaxing for me. So even though I made myself stay up all night for a few nights in a row. Um, it got done and I was proud of it. So I kind of patted myself on the back. It felt good. Um, and then when it came time to print it, this was um, really a feat that that we could all thank April for. Um, she went through and printed out hundreds of copies. <laughs> we looked at um, how much it would cost for the department to print it versus how much it would cost to outsource the printing. Um, and it it ended up being cheaper for us to print it as a department. Um, you can see almost seven cents a page for the department. And then we added in the cost of the each individual page um, for the actual bundles of paper um, for through our state contract. And the workbook ended up being uh, 254 pages long. Um, so it was it was quite a lot to type up. But you know, um, if you total up the cost, it only cost the department two dollars and fifty three cents per workbook. Um, and then the bookstore marks it up um, to five dollars to sell to the students. When we sell it to the bookstore, um, they purchase it for three seventy five. So we're making a bit of a profit for each workbook um, and that that money goes you know back into our department for us to use on future endeavors and things for things for our students. Um, and it's you know it's I think it's been beneficial, especially when we went to um, online teaching back in the spring and it was just kind of, you know, everything was planned out to do face to face and then all of a sudden it was online. Um, as, you know, having having to switch like that, it really it was. It saved a lot of stress on those of us who were teaching with the workbook because the printed materials were already there and so the students already had them um, and basically we just had to film ourselves adding in the lecture bit to it. And um, I don't know about anybody else, but I made sure to set it up so that whenever the students were viewing my lecture videos, all they saw was my handwriting. <laughs> so they wouldn't see me necessarily. That way I could teach them in my pajamas and didn't have to worry about fixing my hair. Um, <laughs> and having that workbook already printed, it, it made that so much uh, less stressful um, because it was just already done. Whereas um, for I was teaching trig at the same time and um, using a it was using an open source textbook. But as far as having the printed notes to write on and I had to go back and make sure I had exactly which question I wanted and if there were any that I needed to um, pull up as like a word problem or something, I had to have those printed out so that students could see those um, as I wrote on them and I filmed myself doing it um, because again, I didn't want to be on camera and using a whiteboard. Um, and so 
just the comparison between having to put together online lectures for my trig classes versus the online lectures for quantitative reasoning that we had the workbook for it was just so much less of a hassle hassle with the workbook so i was really kind of grateful for it there especially so that's about all i got <laughs> And I just wanted to add, and I don't know why I didn't think to include it. Um, the workbook we found produced the similar results in like uh, pass rates and retention rates as uh, the previous material. Um, so that's why we have continued to use it. Uh, any questions? Well, I, I actually have a question. Um, do uh, do you require students to purchase the uh, the hard copy or are they able to use the uh, digital copy for homework as well? They're uh, able to use the digital copy. Um, we provide the PDF, not the Word doc version of, but we give them the PDF in Georgia View and we tell them if they want to use that or a tablet or just use a, a handwritten notebook, that's fine. But Personally, I have found that I, I feel students do better when they purchase the physical workbook or at least print it out themselves. OK, just to add in there, um, when when we originally started, um, there was some confusion about whether we were going to print it ourselves and then hand it out. And, and some of us were doing that. And some of us were posting the PDF on Georgia View and others weren't. Um, and what I what the students found was that, you know, they could sometimes they thought, well, if I don't have to go to the bookstore and pay for it, then it'll be cheaper for me. But then they also found that it was a lot easier if they had the printed pages in front of them during class. And yes. if they'd sat down and done the math, it was more expensive for them to pay for the printing themselves yes. uh, than to purchase it from the, from the bookstore. So and that's kind of. You know, we laid it out for them in class that way. We said, you know, you can, if you want to just use it online, maybe if you have a tablet that you can write on and then save it as a file, then, you know, more power to you. But um, it's, it's by far more advantageous to have the printed copy and it's cheaper just to get it from the bookstore. And kind of add to that, Amanda, I taught it online after the pandemic got started, the semester after the pandemic got started. And so, I required my students to fill out the workbook and the workbook problems and the homework, and they had to scan their homework after they worked it out on the homework paper and upload it to me as homework submission. And so, like you said, it was cheaper for them to purchase the book and write on it and fill it out and then scan those pages in to me than it was to print it out on their own. I went ahead and put a link to uh, the workbook in OpenALG in the chat for you guys. Um, do we have any other any other questions for the group? <laughs> okay, actually, I have one question. Um, usually, because uh, I know, because uh, like uh, you spread the word for everyone to help, and if some questions, like a uh, form, some resource, like uh, for example, some question is from, uh, from the Newton, and since we need to, uh, like a students may buy it, something like that. So my, my question is about the copyright. Is that that's OK, right? Uh, yes, like um, Newton um, said they, they pulled their own materials from other open resource materials. And so they, they welcomed us to include uh, their problems in the workbook. And they even asked for the workbook as soon as we got done because they wanted more problems that we had personally created. So um, the only copyright is the one we did for the grant, which I believe is the Creative uh, Common. I forget the name. I apologize. I know I was proud. It should be uh, and by, I think. 
Yes, 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 that was it. Um, but yes, and Amanda just answered the question. We do manually grade that uh, that homework, but honestly, as Sheila mentioned, since COVID started, I, I have just had them take a picture of it and upload it into our um, uh, D2L for us, and I just grade it from there. That way, I don't have to touch any paper. Yes. But yeah, we're we're okay under copyright, I believe. <coughs> no, I just want to learn just in case in the future want to do the same thing. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And talking about that manually grading for the workbook pages. Uh, yeah, can manually grade it, but it's not that many problems. And a lot of times it was just more of an effort to make sure that they were staying on a task and I can kind of give them some general feedback. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, does the platform, uh, the Newton platform where you had all these, the, your workbook, can it, does it have a limitation on the amount of pages or is that unlimited in terms of quantity wise? Um, Hello? Did you yeah, yeah, me? I understand. I um yeah, I heard the question. I'm a little confused. Do you are you asking if there's a limit on the number of problems or um does no, no, I'm asking in terms of uh, like usually there is a limitation, not limitation, like if it's too heavy the platform cannot hold so much of oh, uh, content. Yes, yes. yes. Um, I I didn't, I don't know how much Google Drive they paid for, but I assume they paid for a lot because um they had like worksheets that were very several megabytes large full of graphs and stuff. So I don't think there's a limit to their okay. platform. Okay, that's, that's, uh, that was my question. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> yes, I can. Uh, so let me pull the workbook up. And yeah, I understand this. Uh, that's a good point about selling the workbook and copyright. Yes. Let me share. Workbook. And to my knowledge, I don't think a lot of the questions were verbatim necessarily from the workbook. Um, and for example, like at the review materials at the end of the workbook, um, I pulled those from just previous review sheets I'd already put together um, from before we, well, from the first time I taught quantitative reasoning, um, whenever I was just kind of making up my own problems. Here's an example of um, one of our homework sheets, and you can see it's not, not terribly long. Um, April, if you want to kind of scroll down to the bottom of it, a lot of the questions are really short and to the point, um, and it really, they're not difficult to grade. Um, and and we're we're kind of lucky in that um, some of us some of our students are willing to grade for us um, for you know I think it's like right at minimum wage but they do it as, as sort of a um, you know campus employment um, of course we have to find students that we trust to actually understand the material um, but it really doesn't take long to manually grade these at all. Yeah, especially after you know this is. I believe our fourth semester with a workbook, so you kind of start memorizing the answers and being able to grade it at a glance. Yes, that's what I was going to say. You can, you learn the answers and can quickly click through them. Mm -hmm. And I will say this: that um, we have two other faculty members who are working on um, typing up a, an instructor's version 
that has all all the solutions to the, the problems within the sections um, like the example problems to work out during class has all the definitions already filled out and, and we have solution pages for the homeworks as well um, April has provided she, she were at first we were all just sort of filling it out ourselves um, and using our own you know verbiage and our own sort of definitions that we wanted to use and then April has provided us with um, handwritten copies of um, of each page in the workbook Yes. And so there's there's commonality there and we have two other faculty members who are working on basically just typing them up to make them look pretty. Do we have any other questions? Well, I think someone's typing. Oh, I missed uh, that. Um, it it's um that's a real hard question. Um, to create the worksheet, like my chapters didn't take me too long. Well, one chapter I had already written because I had a uh, contracted bronchitis one semester, so during the logic session, so I had pretty much typed up the logic chapter of the workbook already. And so that's why I like snagged that one. I was like, oh, done, did. Um, and then the algebra materials, we had already created workbooks when we had made uh, foundations, when foundations first started being implemented in the COREC model, we had made workbooks for foundations of algebra, which is no longer taught in any USG system. Um, so we just pulled from there a little bit. Um, but I guess set theory was the one I had to write from the beginning. And I guess that took about, a week or so to be happy with it and that's why in the grant we specifically uh, asked for a couple of hundred dollars to be paid during summer semester for each of us to work on that solely and um, that's something you could do uh, request a little bit of funding to actually write the book before you uh, request funding to implement it in a class once um, once everybody had written their own chapters and then it got filtered down to me um, and so I, I really I waited till I had everybody's everything before um, before I started putting it together because I wanted to kind of see um, what everyone sent in and the types of questions that I would need to incorporate. Um, and so I crammed it all into about in, in one week. But like I said, I was pulling several all nighters and I wasn't fo allowing myself to focus on anything else. Um, I would say I probably. Easily spent. 40 hours, 40 to 50 hours in one week um, getting this put together. Um, and I was doing it from home on my own um, personal computer. And, you know, during the day, my kids were at home. And then so it was easier for me to work on it at night. Um, and I'm a night owl anyway. So <laughs> same with me. I, it took me about a week, you know, when I was working on it, I got it all four sections of my chapter done and just pulling from some stuff I had already done, copy and pasting and tweaking it. And you know, when I put it in there, it didn't take too long, really. That was the beauty of having everybody each do a chapter instead of trying to work on chapters together. OK, do we have any other questions or anything before we close out? Did you guys want to add anything? I will add this um, after having experienced, you know, putting the workbook together and teaching the course using the workbook and then especially now that we have to do, um, you know, provide online materials even for our face to face classes in case a student gets put in quarantine. Um, you know, I've just like she, Sheila mentioned earlier, how many times have we thought about writing our own book? And this is okay. I kind of got my foot in the door and I sort of know a little bit about what to do, at least to provide my students with, um, you know, 
just a, a framework of this is what we're going to be doing and you know that way they've already got the problems written out and it you know I could definitely see myself doing this for for other classes you know whether I share you know I'd share the material of course with with um, you know my colleagues and stuff I doubt I would actually publish it but um, it's just <laughs> flat out helpful. Yes. And too having the fill in the blanks like we did in the workbook it helps students kind of learn how to take notes. It makes them kind of lean in during the lectures to even if it's a virtual lecture or a video that we've made of it, us going over it. They're having to fill out that workbook and that helps them learn it. It's, so it's been a good experience building this. Yes. Okay, well, this was great, guys. Thank you so much for presenting, um, showing us your workbook and talking about the process. It was actually really great to hear about um, the uh, initial application and the feedback you got and how you made changes to apply the second time. Um, I think that's the first time we've had the opportunity to hear about an experience like that. So um, that's definitely important for people to kind of hear about and just, you know, make sure that we're not getting discouraged by the feedback that we get. Um, so, yeah, but um, thank you guys. If there's nothing else, I'll go ahead and stop recording. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that then. <laughs> <laughs>